Next on Worcester News tonight, a Selfridge man is facing multiple charges after police say his vehicle crashed into a law office. A look at the damage left behind. Plus, a Worcester firefighter's new creation could help keep himself and other first responders safe from a hidden danger. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. Spencer police arrest a man this weekend after they say he crashed into a building under the influence. Nearby surveillance video captured the car traveling at high speeds going right by a group of kids. Our Chandler Walsh spoke with people nearby who say they're happy the outcome wasn't worse. Chandler. Olivia, the car went straight through an intersection without stopping before hitting a law office. Tenants say the damage is an in, in, in inconvenience, but they're just happy no one got hurt. A van speeds through Grove Street in Spencer before crashing into the front of a Main Street law office. Could have been tragic. Attorney Michelle Murray is relieved her wall was the only thing damaged Sunday night. Police say the driver, a 26-year-old Southbridge man, was charged with operating under the influence. Murray says there could have been a horrible accident the way he came across Route 9. There's usually a lot of traffic on this street mm -hmm. and he just didn't stop at the end of Grove Street and came straight across. If somebody had been driving one way or another at that moment, he would have hit them. A nearby home captured the speeding car on surveillance video. It shows several children playing close by. Christine Walker says it's common for kids like her seven-year-old grandson to be outside. Yeah, he plays outside and that could have been very dangerous. Walker says the incident is also scary for pedestrians. I walk, I don't have a car, and I could have been up there going shopping yesterday instead of today. Attorney Murray says she's lucky she wasn't inside at the time. The vehicle pushed into the building right by her desk chair. I would have been terrified that I wouldn't have been injured. The building doesn't have any structural issues, but Murray says this isn't the first time a car has caused damage here. I think it was a little over a year ago, um, a car came in, um, came off the road and took out my sign. The driver, Joshua White's case is being continued until tomorrow. He's being held without bail until then. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. A raw and rainy day out there today, and it looks like it could be the same tomorrow, but we are expected to see some sunshine this week. Here's meteorologist Tim Kelly with a first look at our local forecast. Uh, that was kind of a shock to the system today when the cold air came in. We had rain that was moderate rain. We only picked up about a tenth of an inch, but the temperature fell to 35 degrees at the airport during the middle of the day. Meantime, a snowstorm in Maine. And down near the ground, the air is coming from the northeast, but up in the sky, the air is coming from the southwest. It's classic overrunning. And to our south, there is a severe storm outbreak now from Virginia to North Georgia. That's going to miss us to the south. This cloud comes by. There's a little bit of dry air that's coming in uh, late tonight, early tomorrow. We may have some sunshine before another wave of low pressure. So it's kind of drizzly outside. Uh, the temperatures are really not doing that well in our forecast guidance. It's actually colder than what we're showing here. Uh, so we're probably going to stay in the 30s through about sunrise. Uh, you may get a, a little break of sun in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. It looks like it should be dry, uh, but the roads are damp. There's been drizzle. There's a fog around, and the clouds are going to thicken up again. Look at Fenway Park at noontime, about 43 degrees. The airport in Worcester, 39. And the sky cover shows mostly cloudy. Maybe we get a sunny break, but just as equally possible. There could be some drizzle around. There's another weather system coming at us. 4 o'clock in the afternoon, temperature hasn't moved too much, 40 to 45. Tomorrow night, rain may be mixed with snow early on Wednesday. That's going to keep on moving. And then it does get brighter in our 10-day in a few minutes. Thank you, Tim. A Worcester man remains behind bars after a judge denies a defense motion to dismiss multiple charges, including moving a dead body. Prosecutors say Thomas Guerin is charged with moving the remains of a 68-year-old man. The body of Marcelino Masuace was found buried in the basement of Guerin's apartment building. Masuace was reported missing the month before. Guerin's case was continued to May 8th. A Worcester firefighter is working on a new creation to help keep both him and his fellow first responders safe. In an already dangerous job, John Callahan says this can help prevent toxic diesel fumes from entering your body. Our Roslyn Flaherty joins us now to explain. Roslyn. Olivia, according to two statistics, firefighters have a higher chance of getting cancer than the general public. And one firefighter came up with an idea he thinks will lower those risks. Connects with a magnet. 
and it stands straight up. Firefighter John Callahan says this device could be an answer to keeping him and others safe from toxic diesel fumes. Whenever I've been near an exhaust with one of our meters, you, you pick up chlorine, carbon monoxide. The Worcester firefighter invented what he calls the Calavent. It's a chimney-like structure connecting to a fire truck's exhaust pipe. It's designed to carry fumes up into the air and away from firefighters. He says he got the idea when he was at a fire over the summer. After working hard in the building, I came out and um, I just noticed that we had to put away all this hose and I'm already breathing heavy and I'm actually standing right next to a fire truck breathing in all those toxic fumes. According to the International Agency for Research on Cancer, there is some evidence of an association between diesel exhaust and bladder cancer. 1540 Connection is an organization helping people and firefighters recognize the warning signs early. They say firefighters have a 9% higher chance of getting cancer than the general public. And Callahan's work is a good step. When we think about the, the work that's being done in prevention around cleaning your uniform, wearing a mask, um, the work that John's doing around trying to keep some of the fumes out of there, the kind of the, the way of the firefighter. We have to figure out how to get people to recognize it early. Callahan says his invention is based off another device they use in the station, which gets the fumes out of their living quarters. He says firefighters do so much to prevent getting cancer, like washing their clothes and using wipes, and says this could be another tool. There's no absolute elimination of the exposure, but this idea that I came up with will definitely limit it when the time comes. This device is not associated with the Worcester Fire Department. It's still in the early stages, but he hopes to have it on every fire truck in the country one day. Live in Worcester, Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. A retired Catholic bishop who served in the Worcester area for more than 60 years has died. Bishop George Rieger was 89 years old. According to the Diocese of Worcester, he confirmed more than 20,000 teenagers. Rieger was ordained a priest in 1958. Bishop Robert McManus worked with Rieger and says he was a hardworking man who was an inspiration to him. He was the pastor of two parishes in the diocese. He was a superintendent of Catholic schools. He was a headmaster of uh, Marion Central High School. He was a man full of energy. He didn't like to sit down. Always joyful, very, very humble, humble man. Um, anything he got, he gave away. And Rieger was living at Christopher House in the city when he passed away. McManus says he would get visitors every day because of how many people lives he changed. With the push from members of the disabled community, Worcester's Commission on Disability is working to increase the number of wheelchair accessible taxis in the city. Right now, there is only one taxi van citywide that is wheelchair accessible provided by Red Cab. The commission says the challenge comes into play when someone is using a motorized scooter or electric chair. They typically need a transportation van, but the cost may be too high for some companies. They're hopeful with more talk around the topic, companies or or entrepreneurs may be able to come up with new ideas for disabled customers. We want to encourage not only the taxi companies themselves, but also the WRTA and other private drivers that drive for Uber or Lyft to think about how they could provide transportation options for individuals who may use wheelchairs. And right now, Uber and Lyft are not options for disabled customers. Speaker of the House Robert DeLeo announcing a bill looking to ban Massachusetts drivers from touching their cell phones will go before the House for a vote this session. The bill was filed by Governor Charlie Baker in January and would allow p police to pull people over for not wearing their seatbelts and other measures intended to improve road safety. Our Brittany Schaefer spoke with st state leaders today and joins us now with more. Brittany. Olivia, many states, including New Hampshire and Rhode Island, ban drivers from using cell phones. Here in central Massachusetts, Senator Michael Moore says he supports the bill and it will decrease distracted driving. Governor Charlie Baker is pushing a bill to ban any use of cell phones while driving. In central Massachusetts, legislators say it's an important step for road safety. It's a step forward. It won't solve everything. I think even though we have statutes about texting and driving, people do text and drive. I think it's a great idea. Um, the Senate has actually passed this legislation 
um, previously. So it's nice now to have the administration on board. Texting and looking down at GPS while driving is illegal. Worcester police say the bill could decrease the number of accidents. People obviously do it all the time. Uh, so it would be a major change. Texting is obviously a much bigger problem. Anything that takes your eyes off the road is, is the bigger problem, but you can't deny that anything you're doing at all besides driving, whether it's eating or talking on the phone or anything else, does distract you to some degree. The bill has cleared the Senate in the past, but hasn't received a final vote in the House. Senator Michael Moore says hands-free driving should already be a law. Obviously, it's something I think we should have done last year, last legislative session, and hopefully now that he's on board uh, with two of the three branches of government having spoken that the third will come on board and we can move forward and get this finally resolved. State Representative David LaBeouf says while he supports the idea, he thinks the bill needs more work. I agree with it in spirit, but I think we need to work out the details too about enforcement, um, you know, education, um, you know, working with the police departments and, um, you know, the various communities about how that law is going to be implemented and um, what are the actual financial burdens that are going to be put on people if they do violate the law. DeLeo says he expects the bill to come up for a vote during this current legislative session. Live on Park Ave, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. A heart valve procedure is getting a lot of attention after a recent diagnosis for legendary rock star Mick Jagger. Doctors in Worcester, including at St. Vincent Hospital, have been performing an aortic valve replacement in a less invasive way. The procedure is a way of replacing the aortic valve in the heart without doing open heart surgery. Doctors can go through the groin or the arm. St. Vincent says in the past, many people suffering from severe aortic stenosis had limited options to replace an unhealthy valve. One of the um, primary alternative access sites is the subclavian artery or the, the uh, axillary artery. Um, the, the, that's an artery in the shoulder uh, that allows us to implant the um, heart valve. In most patients, that artery is generally large enough uh, and in most cases free of disease uh, to allow us to implant the valve through the, through the artery in the shoulder. Doctors also say doing the procedure through the arm rather than the groin leaves minimal scarring.